One of the best features offered in Switcher Studio is the ability to connect up to nine iOS devices. That's nine iOS devices for live multicam streaming. That's amazing. But why? Today we're going to talk about ways that you can create a good multicam setup to fully leverage all that Switcher has to offer. If you have any questions or comments, feel like I've left anything out, or you just want a shout out, hit us up in the comments. I'll be in there after this is posted to help answer any questions. And if there are any topics you want Dan or myself to talk about, let us know in the comments. First, let's start out with something pretty simple. Let's talk about how we would set up our cameras for just one person or subject. Now, don't worry, we'll talk about more difficult setups with multiple people or even sporting events later in the video. The first camera that I would set up would be just a general straight on wide or medium shot that shows the subject and its surroundings in their entirety. This is going to be your main camera. Most of the video or the live stream will feature shots from this camera. It's the camera that I'm looking into right now. Uh, this is usually what we call the A camera or an A cam. So following that logic, we would then have a B cam. This is going to be a secondary camera angle. Uh, it's going to be something that shows a different point of view. For this purpose, I would set up a B cam to the side right here with a medium or a close shot. And for a live stream, it's great to have a B cam set up on a single subject just to help vary things up so things don't get so boring. <laughs> when you're recording for post-production like I am, that B cam is great to use when you need to hide a mistake or a pause or a pause. You can just cut right over to the other cam and boom, it's seamless. So we have A cams, we have B cams. So it makes sense that we'd have C cams, D cams, E cams, F cam, G cam. You get it. Um, <laughs> if I were gonna do a live stream of say, um, me doing a live illustration, or I wanna show off something that's in my hands down here, I could set up a C cam. Using a stand, I could put it up above me and shoot down, showing what I'm working on, uh, showing all my beautiful illustrations. So another thing that I wanna highlight is the ability to go handheld with your B cam. If you have an extra set of hands, you could have someone with their iPhone in their hands, moving around, staying out of your camera frames, and they can point the camera at whatever you need. They can vary up the shot size on the fly, go from a wide to a close shot, or focus on something different as time goes by. There's a lot of gear out there to help you improve your handheld camera skills and help stabilize some of the shaky camera moves. Um, Switcher Studio has built-in camera stabilization. You can turn it on and off, but there's a lot of gimbals and things like that that can help you as well. Uh, for one, there's the DJI Osmo Mobile. Um, it's a battery-powered gimbal that gets rid of any camera shake and has controls for pan and tilt and whatnot. But the coolest part of this is that it can be connected straight into Switcher um, so that you have the same controls for pan and tilt that you have at your fingertips while you're using the DJI Osmo. You can have straight in the Switcher device while you're switching camera angles. You can just change the pan and the tilt. Another great option are iographer cases. Uh, they're just like the cases that you pop your phone or your iPad into. Um, they just have really great easy to use handles on each side. They also have lenses that you can purchase separately to augment the iPhone camera lens. And if you wanna go crazy, Beast Grip uh, makes a camera cage for your iPhone that lets you mount additional handles, mics, monitors. Uh, they even make an adapter that allows you to mount a DSLR or a cinema camera to your iPhone. Speaking of going crazy, you could even get a motorized slider. Uh, that lets you move your camera left to right or right to left, or a jib, which is kind of like a small crane for your camera, and mount your iPhone to them. Edelkrone is a company that makes some really great sliders and jibs. Um, there's a lot of options out there, uh, but they can also get expensive really quickly. If you have the cash for a slider or a jib, they can really add a lot of production value, and a lot of them can be programmed or even controlled remotely. 
This means you can set them up and let them go. For a single subject by itself, if you have a jib or a slider, I'd recommend using that for your B cam so that your main camera can stay that wide shot that takes in the entire scene. So let's talk about putting another person on camera now. So now you have two people. With two people on camera, you'll still wanna start out with your A cam being a wide shot that takes in everybody and their surroundings. But this time your B cams will play a much larger role. You wanna set up a B cam on each side of your A cam. So here's my A cam, I'll put a B cam here and a B cam here, right? On each side. Uh, they are going to shoot across at each individual person. With this setup, you can show your guest or your host, whoever's speaking for the majority of the time, and you can switch to the wide A cam when there is a back and forth conversation or you're setting up another question. I also wanna point out two different ways you can position your guest and cameras when you have two people. The first way is to have them both angled towards each other at 45 degree angles, like this. This way they can turn easily back and forth from talking to each other and talking directly to the audience in the A cam. So the second way is to have them face directly towards one another at a 90 degree angle from the A cam. So they're sitting like this, looking straight into each other's eyes. This puts the audience at a voyeuristic point of view and sets up the interviewers for a more intimate conversation. Now, this needs to be done carefully. Because uh, you don't want to isolate your audience, especially during a live stream uh, where audience participation is key. But if you're having an intimate conversation with someone or perhaps you're doing a serious interview with a politician, let's say, this is a really good setup. Uh, for this setup, you'll want to place the B cams behind the guest. So right over here, over my shoulder, behind your guest or your interviewer, um, and shoot over the shoulder at the other person. Shooting over the shoulder puts you in the position of the person listening and gives you a reference spot for where you are in the scene. It allows you to have an almost straight on view of the speaker as well. One important thing to note is to not cross the plane of view. In other words, don't put your cameras on opposing sides of your speakers and don't put them in the view of the A-cam. Let's talk about three specific use cases for multicam that don't involve an interview. A big one, is arts and crafts. An artist can benefit greatly from using multiple camera angles. Let's say that you're a painter and you're doing a live stream of a work in progress. You could set up a camera behind you, over your shoulder, that shows your painting come to life. And you could put a camera in front of you that could show how hard at work you are. You could provide commentary to this camera in front of you. You could even set up a camera that's positioned above you, showing your palette and how you're mixing your colors. To go hands-free, you could throw all of your camera sources into a multi-view and switcher and show all of them at once. And this allows you to focus on what you do best, paint. Another great use case for a multicam would be for a musician. So let's say I'm a drummer. I'm not, I'm far from it. But let's just say that I am. I could set up an A cam in front of me, showing my whole drum set then a B cam over my shoulder, looking down at my drumsticks going to work. Uh, you could even throw in a C cam on the floor showing you kicking the pedal. You could use the new camera auto switching feature that would allow you to just sit back, play on the drums while switcher automatically changes camera angles for you. It'll just go ahead and switch to the whole wide shot, to the overhead shot of you drumming, to the kick pedal. It's pretty awesome. Sports is another huge reason to have multiple camera angles, and it will probably get its own video in the future. Uh, in fact, every sport could probably get its own video. So for now though, a wide shot of a soccer game is great for your A-cam. Set it up high in the bleachers, maybe put it on a DJI Osmo Mobile so you can turn it left and right. I'm not sure which way is left and right for you, but maybe it's left and right. But then you can also have two handheld cameras on the field, one at each goal that you can switch to when the action gets close. For basketball, you could have a handheld camera under the basket to get free throws or action down the lane. For football, you could have a handheld that follows along the line of scrimmage down the field. The possibilities are endless, really. 
You could even put a camera on the commentator and every now and then go to that to get their reactions or they can speak directly to the camera. So thank you for joining me for this takeover. I hope it was helpful, informative, maybe even inspirational, I hope. I can't wait to see what all of you create using Multicam and Switcher. There's already so many great examples of what you guys are creating. Um, check out our Facebook Switcher Studio Enthusiast group um, to get some inspiration there. Check out our Facebook uh, group Switcher 101, um, which will help you get started uh, and answer a lot of the questions that a lot of you have. Um, and let us know if there's anything we didn't cover. Uh, you want more info about something or you have a better way of doing than I explained. We also want to talk about the things that you want to know more about. So share your ideas or questions about other topics that you want to cover. Thanks everybody and I'll see you later.